The way of heaven is to bring good, not harm. It was around 2000 BC that the last mammoths perished. The demise of this huge animal after 4.6 million years on Earth coincided with the rise of humankind. Compared to Earth's 4.6 billion years of evolution, human civilization has lasted for the briefest of instants. One after another, species have been and gone. Eventually, humans have come to the realization that every life is unique and extraordinary. That every species has the right to survive and multiply in their common home, Earth. Inside Nanheize Park, there is a very special cemetery. Here, visitors pay their respects not to deceased people, but to other forms of life that once shared this planet. Twenty years ago, Guo Gong proposed the creation of this unique cemetery dedicated to Earth's extinct species. As a committed nature conservationist, he wanted to tell the story of biological survival and destruction in a compelling way. The International Union for Conservation of Nature publishes a red list of threatened species. It records that humans have been responsible for the loss of 83% of wild mammals and half of plants. Since the dawn of the Industrial Age, Earth has been experiencing a sixth mass extinction of wildlife, one that is occurring faster than the previous five. Yet human beings are not a super species above the laws of nature. They are one of the dominoes. Nature is warning that if humans continue to conquer and claim without restraint, they too will eventually fall. Distinguished delegates have said that this is an historical moment. The United Nations Conference on Environment and Development, held in 1992, is popularly known as the Earth Summit. On June the 11th, delegates from more than 150 countries, including China, signed the Convention on biological diversity. The preamble to this document affirms that the conservation of biological diversity is a common concern of humankind. For the first time, a contract had been concluded to respect and protect the diversity of life on Earth. We have in 1992, at the time of the Earth Summit, China was undertaking a full-scale modernization drive. Two years later, the country issued the China Action Plan for Biodiversity Conservation and the regulations of the PRC on nature reserves. Four years after that, it launched a series of major ecological projects covering such areas as natural forest protection and returning farmland 
to forest. And a year later, in 1999, a series of national wildlife protection and nature reserve projects were launched. Yunnan in southwest China is known around the world for its rich biodiversity. The altitude here can reach as high as 6,700 meters. The province, whose native plant and vertebrate species account for more than half the total in China, is celebrated as a kingdom of flora and fauna. The old, neatly arranged cards were created by the botanist Wu Zhongyi. Even though the country was at war at the time, he continued sketching and making notes by the light of the kerosene lamp in his specimen lab. On more than 30,000 cards, he recorded the name, appearance, and characteristics of almost every plant species in China. By referring to these cards, a team of 500 authors and editors from 80 scientific research and teaching institutions spent 45 years compiling Flora of China the world's largest and most comprehensive work on botany. In 2007, the Germplasm Bank of Wild Species in Southwest China was established in Kunming. Speaking about the bank, Hu Zhongyi told his students that it should be open to the whole country and benefit the whole of humankind. Let all useful plants shine, he said. This vast building, the size of eight football fields, contains the seeds of more than 36,000 wild plant species native to China. It also houses seeds of some 700 plant species from 22 other countries. Today, humans are aware that the more germplasm resources they save, the more hope they have for the future. The National Crop Gene Bank of China in Beijing preserves 520,000 germplasm samples. They include seeds of every crop variety found in China, as well as their so-called wild relatives. It is the largest store of crop germplasm samples anywhere in the world. The National Gene Bank of Forage Germplasm, located in Hohat, stores 12,000 native plant germplasm samples, 100,000 plant specimens, and 1.4 million soil samples. These resources provide a guarantee for the protection of the grasslands' biodiversity and ecological recovery. In the eastern city of Yantai, China has established the world's first gene bank that includes every potential example of saturation mutagenesis in wheat. No other country can rival China for its knowledge of how the genetic composition of every species is formed through thousands of years of evolution under different ecological conditions.
，在野外的时候，眼睛会到处去找，一旦看到了，就跟呃找到宝贝一样，这个很兴奋的。野生稻就是杂草，一株杂草都可以改变一个国家的命运，就是指的野生稻。Freely growing wild rice with its complex and diverse genetic makeup has an extraordinary ability to improve rice cultivation. Yet, with the continuous expansion of planned agriculture, since the 1980s the expanse of wild rice has been in sharp decline, to the point that it's facing the danger of extinction. For more than two decades, Yang Qingwen has been leading a research team dedicated to accurately identifying the scale of wild rice growth across the country. Part of their job is to protect the wild rice genes from being affected by cultivated rice. One way of doing this is to create a safe area for it to grow. This point is felt by the 因为在这个野生稻一百米范围之内，不允许有水稻的出现。开花时的串粉，这里一百多亩田不种水稻，在这边。The origin of rice cultivation can be traced back 15,000 years to Hunan. Today, people here have given up land that had been cultivated for thousands of years, pulled up fences, and posted warnings, all in order to protect. The wild rice. 通过建立信息库的形式，向全国发布。这个利用野生稻的专家，能够了解我们这些资源，使得这些资源能够被利用。China has 23 critically endangered wild rice populations distributed in seven provinces, namely Jiangxi, Hunan, Fujian, Guangdong, Guangxi, Yunnan. And Hainan. All are included in the National Biological Resources Conservation Plan. On November the 2nd, 2020, news coming out of a village called Qingju in Hongyang, Hunan, caused an international sensation. Double cropping rice had achieved a world record yield of almost 23 tons per hectare. By the end of the year, China could report national rice output of just under 212 million tons. This meant that the country could guarantee the food security for its 1.4 billion people. The ancient Chishui, as it flows across the Yunnan Guizhou Plateau on its way to join the Yangtze, carries in its waters the mellow aroma of motai liquor. For people living beside it, fishing has been their way of life for generations. However, by the end of last century, their traditional livelihood was under threat from over exploitation. <laughs> The distress of the Chishui was shared by the entire Yangtze River Basin. There's virtually no other river in the world that can rival the Yangtze for the richness of its biodiversity. Of its more than 4,300 forms of aquatic life, 170 are unique to it. Yet, after hundreds of millions of years of evolution and little more than 2,000 years of human influence, the ecosystem was on the verge of collapse. Eighty-seven-year-old academician Cao Wenxuan has been working on the Yangtze River since 1955. He has seen at first hand the decline of fish resources. He has also witnessed the disappearance of the Baiji, the Yangtze River dolphin. Deeply concerned about the crisis faced by the Yangtze River, 
In 2006, Cao proposed a complete fishing ban. However, he knew the measure was likely to face opposition from the fishermen who had depended on the river for their livelihood for generations. In 2012, the construction of an ecological civilization was incorporated into the plan for national development. A new slogan, Beautiful China, appeared. A key element of the plan was to promote well-coordinated environmental conservation and avoid overdevelopment. On January the 1st, 2017, it was announced that a 10-year fishing moratorium would be enforced along the length of the Chishui River. The moratorium is now in its fourth year. Cao regularly sends researchers to the Chishui to monitor the changes in the fish population. The scientists are usually accompanied by former fishermen. On January the 1st, 2021, China embarked on a new stage in its biodiversity conservation program. Along the Yangtze River, the birthplace of Chinese civilization, a 10-year fishing ban was officially introduced. In the first year, 110,000 fishing boats have suspended operations and almost 280,000 fishermen have hung up their nets. The cost to the National Treasury in terms of compensation is estimated at over 20 billion yuan. Ten years is a long time in a human life, but it's equivalent to the reproductive cycle of three generations of fish. After 10 years, the renewed, more abundant fish resources will nourish the entire basin ecosystem. The ban on fishing in the Yangtze River Basin epitomizes China's approach to biodiversity conservation. Every protection project requires a choice to be made between the present and the future. How should humans treat other living species? This is not a question with multiple choice answers. There's only one correct response, and that's to respect and protect every species. The enclosed passage was specially designed by Chong Jibin and his team to encourage the 11 Milu to board the vehicle. 
the Milu, fitted with tracking devices, are being sent to the south where they'll be released into the wild. The Milu, or Pear David's Deer, is an endangered species. Though it's native to China, 100 years ago, war and other factors meant no more were found here. Then, in 1985, the UK returned 20 Milu to China. Beijing, Jiangsu, and Hubei established protection areas where the deer could roam free. Their numbers have risen steadily, and their population now exceeds 8,000. Chong Jibin's destination is Dongting Lake in Hunan province. There are already more than 200 wild milu there, and these 11 will join the herd. Xiang 呃, After a 32-hour journey, the Milu arrives safely at Dongting Lake. The Milu Rescue Center has set up a temporary enclosure for the new arrivals. Over the past few years, they've brought in Milu from Hubei and Jiangsu in order to improve the herd's genes. It's a law of nature that the greater the number of individuals in a species, the greater the potential for genetic variation and the richer the genetic diversity. Milu, once on the verge of extinction, are now proudly and confidently roaming their ancestral land. Over the past 30 years, China has introduced a series of special programs to protect its most endangered animals and plants. It has also established 250 wild animal rescue and breeding bases and promoted the recovery and development of more than 300 rare and endangered species. In China, the red-crowned crane is considered sacred. 
the chicks undergo a daily training program to prepare them for their twice yearly long distance migration. To date, the Jalong Nature Reserve has released more than 300 red crowned cranes into the wild. The Shavolsky's horse is the only surviving species of wild horse in the world. These horses have been returned to their ancestral home from overseas. Here, at the world's largest wild horse breeding center, they are bred and prepared for release into the wild. 240 of them have so far been returned to the wild. The crested ibis is one of the oldest birds on earth. Once on the verge of extinction, it has been saved by a program of artificial incubation. There are now some 7,000 crested ibises living in their natural habitat in China. They have settled in Shanxi, Zhejiang, and Henan. Others have drifted across the sea to Japan and South Korea. Giant pandas have been inhabiting Earth for 8 million years, a symbol of a global wildlife conservation effort. This Chinese national treasure at one time faced extinction. Over the past few decades, China has established 67 special reserves where giant pandas are bred in captivity before being introduced into the wild. This achievement in boosting the panda population attests to China's success in improving the living environment for other species. The most sustainable form of guardianship is achieved by returning animals to the wild. Endangered species are seeing a recovery of their populations, from being critically endangered to prospering. This is the Chinese vision of biodiversity conservation. At the foot of Mount Guanyin in Shenzhen, in front of a large terraced building, is a group sculpture. It depicts a pair of mammoths and is a memorial to the extinction of life. The building, in China's most economically and technologically active area, houses a vast gene bank, the largest in the world, which was established in 2016. This vast resource stores genetic samples of hundreds of thousands of plant species, millions of animal species, and some 10 million microorganisms. It has the capacity to maintain over 65 million gigabytes of genetic data in digital form more than enough to include all the known and available genes of every form of life. After a history of ignorance and neglect, humankind is now awake to the need to safeguard nature's rich biodiversity. <laughs>